Hey, so welcome back. So we're on to the next uh, job and that's insulation. You saw the, uh, the clips there of the spray foam. We've been spray foaming for two, three days. I think today's gonna be the last day of spray foam and then we've got mountains of uh, mineral wool insulation to put in. So let me take you through the house now and show you where we're at right now. The spray foam totally changed the feel of the house. Um, and the spray foam applicator keeps saying, man, you're gonna have a tight house here. You're gonna have a tight house. So that's what we're going for. So let me take you inside. You can see there's plastic everywhere. Let me take you in the big room and you can really get a sense of So there's a minimum of three inches in the ceiling. This, I was measuring last night, there's five and six inches in some places. Still hasn't done over here yet in that little area. That's a pain to get in that little closet, the triangles we call them. Um, so anyway, three inches minimum in the ceiling, two inches in the walls. You know, this is a five and a half inch bay here. So this three and a half right there, you know, three and a quarter, like right here is two and a half, three up here, three and a quarter. So as advertised, two inches of the walls, and then that'll get three inches of the mineral wool, which this over here is, we're using the Owens Corning uh, Therma Fiber. It's upside down here, but you get the idea. Um, mold resistant, professional grade mineral wool. This is for the roof, for the ceiling. So that's like, whatever that is, eight inches thick. You know, there's only like two in a bag, so. Um, you know, fire resistant above 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, controls moisture to prevent mold. So that stuff's all gonna end up in the roof. There's a whole nother big pile upstairs. It came yesterday, I took my tractor, took it off the truck, came right from the distributor. IDI, I believe they're called. You saw the picture there. And I put them all on the deck out here, the pallets, and then the, one of the guys horsed them all inside. And you can see it's all up in the rim joist is all well insulated. Rim joists are generally a very under insulated area when you're using like, you know, fiberglass insulation. There won't be any fiberglass in this house. It's all spray foam, a foam board, and mineral wool. So, yeah, you can see getting down in there is, you know, kind of a pain. You gotta like lay down to get in there. But, you know, up here, these are two by 12s. They're 11 inches when they're bare. So this is six and a half. So that's, four and a half inches right there to there's three inches three inches is the minimum we want but to here you know that's like five inches right there so there'll definitely be enough insulation in this house like i said the r values we're going for are like exterior walls you got of course you got r6 outside prevent thermal bridging you saw that in the zip sheathing that's an inch that's an r6 Two inches of spray foam and what the spray foam also does is it seals all those areas in each stud cavity where the plywood hits the stud may not be tight there because of you know uh, irregularities in the, in the in the lumber you know lumber is an imperfect you know they twist they bend they turn so you put them all together you put the plywood on it may not you know hit each stud perfectly tight so what the spray foam does is it fills all those gaps in each stud cavity by stud cavity i mean like over here between between the studs um 
stud base, stud cavity, whatever you want to call it. But you see the spray foam fills that whole area. It also gives the wall more anti-racking. It makes it more rigid. It actually adds strength to the structure. So this is closed cell spray foam um, that we're using. So anyway, the outside walls will be R6 outside, two inches of spray foam is R14, so that's a 20. Right there, we've met code. Then you add the mineral wool, which is an R15, and you're up to like R35 or so in the walls with zero uh, thermal bridging. You've heard me talk about this before, but it's finally coming to fruition here, and I'm geeking out on it, so bear with me. So R35 walls, zero thermal bridging. In the ceiling, Minimum of three inches. There's no foam outside of the ceiling. But, you know, on the outside of the uh, rafters. So this, let's say there's three inches minimum of spray foam. So that's R21. And then the eight inches of rock wool will give me uh, R32-ish, say. So you're looking at like an R53 roof. Code is R49, so we're going to be okay there. But again, you got all that ceiling that's going on, you know, here and here, so that there's no air going to get out of that roof or in that roof. Plus, with the you know ice and water shield over the whole roof, you know, code is you just put it under three, the first three feet. We've got it on the whole roof. We got it on the whole roof, and then. Uh, the spray foam inside so it's this is a tight tight structure so again now you know why we put the HRV in I mean, if you look back in here you know you see down in that corner down there I mean that's just all continuous spray foam so that's not gonna no air is getting in there you know good stuff so Anyway, that's an update for now. The guys are on their way. We're going to start getting all this. They're, I'm not touching it. They're going to get all this mineral wool in. And there should be another delivery coming of the, the thinner stuff for the walls. So it'll be a few more days before we're done. But I'll take you around and show you after we're done. That mineral wool is also kind of the best sound deadener type insulation you can get. So... When that mineral wool is all in here, and spray foam behind it, this house is going to get really quiet, and it's going to get really small on us. And then next will be the drywall, and then it really gets small. So things are moving along. We're excited. I'll take you around after uh, insulation is done. Just want to show you one more thing we got done yesterday. Jen and I got the trim around the garage doors. That was tricky getting these angles right. I kind of had to overlap them. I didn't film any of it, but the way I did it was I kind of put this one up here, put a screw in it, and then overlapped this one, and then just drew a, a mark where the where the two pieces crossed on the top and the bottom, and then made that angle cut. So I think it came out pretty good. You know, again, it's a rough cut on a barn, so we're not building the Taj Mahal here. But I still got some work to do. Got batten strips to put on the front. And I got to get the soffit in there. And still got a little trim to do on the side. Got a couple things going on. You think? Okay, so 
took the uh, insulators about a week and a half to get the whole job done, but now all the mineral wool's in. Here's the, the great room. Whole ceiling's done, everything's done. Um, there's still a few windows. See how, like this window they got around, but this one, not yet. So there's still a few windows to do. Now, I've got to come back and put some uh, framing in here. That's not a good example, but over here, like above all the windows, you see the framing just then stops right here. And my trim's gonna go up there. I gotta have something to nail the trim to. Plus I wanna insulate up here. So I'm gonna come put an inch of foam. I have some scraps of foam from the basement and then put a two by four on the flat. And then they'll come back and insulate around all the windows here. So I don't know, maybe it just used, I got a little gun with a low expanding foam. Um, but you see we got lights on. We tested out all the lights, got them hooked up before we put anything on the ceiling so that if there was a problem, we could fix it. Um, take you downstairs. I'm spending the day today cleaning up, getting ready for drywall. Got to get all the stuff out as much as you can. These two pieces of staging are going to go up in the loft because again, the loft is going to be all wood. So I'll be out of the way of the drywall or if I put it up there. Uh, I'm doing the wood myself, so there's still a lot of stuff down here. I mean, all the tools I'm just going to keep down here, kind of put them in a cluster in the middle of the room. But the drywall is doing all that wall. Of course, the bathroom. This wall I'm going to do with wood. Drywall will do that wall. And, and the bedroom. And then for the ceilings, this ceiling up here is going to be drywall in the bedroom. In the wood shop, I'm not going to do anything because I'm going to do a bunch of dust collection and a ceiling. There's no need to have a ceiling out here. With all this duct work, it's just going to get fussy. But anyway, the drywaller is going to drywall the ceiling in the bathroom. This area out here, I'm going to do a drop ceiling because I'm envisioning this um, as sort of a flexible room. I'm envisioning sort of a hangout space. So make it a little bit nicer than the wood shop, say, but who knows? If I know me like I think I know me, it's probably going to turn into wood shop anyway. So. Okay, well after a day of cleaning in the basement, get ready for the uh, sheetrock because I feel pretty good about uh, where we're at. I got everything away from the walls. This wall, I got most of the stuff over here against this wall, my machines. Because that's not going to be sheetrock, like I said, that's going to be wood. So that'll be the last thing that happened. You see I got all the home runs for the electrical panel there. So that'll be last. But this room, I just got to move the joiner out of here and there's a box of screws there, but that's pretty much ready to go. Cleaned out, swept out, got all the junk out of here, all the construction junk. Um, got this whole room, you know, the stuff that is here is in the middle of the room. So. When the sheetrock comes in, I hear it's going to be on dollies and they'll just run them right over to where they want to be. So I just cleaned all the walls out. Got some stuff in the utility room because no sheetrock in there. In the bathroom down here, I just have the duct work for the makeup air kit that I got. I got to get that duct work in before Wednesday. So I'm in pretty good shape. I made a nice list of uh, what has to happen. Uh, let me take you upstairs real quick and I'll just show you a couple things that uh got to happen before sheetrock. I don't know if I'll film it or not, but yeah, so here's my list. The hall closet, I got to reframe. We're going to put a wall right here about, and the closet's going to become a two foot door. We got a double door that opens like this, pulls out on either side. So this part of the closet will be a closet into the bathroom so there'll be sheetrock here up here so i gotta do that of course i gotta get all this junk out of here i'll put that in the mud room because the mud room's not getting any sheetrock so i can put that in there do all the window trim insulate behind the tub that still hasn't happened yet pipes for the hood vent i showed you change the erv grills out front i gotta get cat five 
all my cat 5 stuff's going up there that's for internet and yeah internet so I want to get one up into the loft just in case I want to use it someday the low voltage to the hood from the makeup air unit so that when you turn the hood on the makeup air unit comes on I just got to get a wire down there the low voltage from the thermostat to the inverter downstairs that'll be from somewhere in here we're going to put the thermostat downstairs over to the inverter so that when Keith comes to hook up the inverter we're ready to go and then I got to do all the blocking blocking for the cabinets in the kitchen blocking for all the stuff in the bathrooms the towel holders toilet paper holder all that stuff I went and gathered up all my scrap wood from the build two by fours over here and then bigger stuff in this pile and that'll all be for blocking and then anything left is pretty much scrapped we're just gonna have a big fire and burn it get rid of it before Joe comes back to put the lawn in so anyway we're in good shape I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this one up here if you want to follow along in our home build consider subscribing if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends whatever it is you like to do any interaction with the video is welcomed and we'll see you next time from white pine woods sheetrock time see ya